Dread certainly dominates the day these days, doesn't it? But you know what? There's, a, there's another option. And I'm wondering if you could use some peace. If you have eight minutes or so, I think we'll put them to good use. If not, please, no worries. Just post your prayer needs on the page before you slip out. The city of Svalbard, Norway, is the safest place on earth. At least that's what the Global Diversity Trust is banking on. They are the brains behind an ultra-high security and ultra-low temperature bank vault that houses seeds of every plant we eat, more than two million of them. If Svalbard isn't the safest place on earth, it's certainly one of the coldest and farthest north. Below zero degree weather is common. Polar bears outnumber humans. The frigid temperature and the sparse population uniquely combine and qualify it to safeguard agriculture against catastrophe. Underground concrete bunkers are built to withstand floods and fires, even nuclear attacks. In the case of global warming or, or worldwide plague, the seeds are safe. Now, most of us cannot hide out in a bunker. Yet the threats of calamity Boy, they make us want to do so. If the global temperature rises a few more degrees, if classified information falls into sinister hands, let the wrong person push the wrong red button. I mean, it's enough to make a person purchase a, a flight to Svalbard. And as if the worldwide perils weren't enough, do we not face personal challenges? Blood count goes up. Savings account goes down. Marriage goes south. The pandemic rages. Work goes off the rails. And stress, well, stress goes off the charts. We can't sleep, can't eat. Powerless to calm this inner storm. The result? Anxiety. Anxiety is not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of immaturity, and it's certainly not a sign of demon possession. It's simply the result of living in a fast-changing, challenging world. Anxiety is not a sign of weakness, but anxiety does weaken us. You know this. It takes our sleep. It numbs our minds. It clutters our hearts with dread. Yet I want to tell you something. Help is here. Help is here. You have at your disposal the surest antidote for trepidation, the Holy Spirit. He is the calming presence of God in the world today. And He will help you defy the voices of fear and draw nigh to the presence of peace. Did you know His first act in earthly history was to turn chaos into calm? Remember how the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. That's the second verse in the Bible, Genesis 1 and verse 2. The earliest depiction of our planet was not a welcoming one. My imagination conjures up wild images of of spewing lava and random comets and colliding waves and lightless corridors. There was no life. There was no light. There was no pleasant sound. Only chaos, abyss, and seething destruction. Yet in that moment of primal frenzy, we see the first, the inaugural appearance of the Holy Spirit hovering over the face of the waters. We might expect a different verb. The Spirit of God ruled, or the Spirit of God commanded, or the Spirit of God directed or declared. Yet the first activity of the Holy Spirit was to hover, to hover over a frenzied world. I'm opening my Bible to the book of De Deuteronomy where this word appears one other time in Scripture. And it, again, is in the context of, of chaos. God's relationship to ancient Israel 
is compared to an eagle who stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 11. You can envision the scene, right? The squawking eaglets, the, the mouths open, the heads bobbing. The nest is, well, it's, it's a swarm of energy. It's a swarm of inexperience and inability. But here comes Mama Eagle. Her presence calms her flock. Her provision nourishes her eaglets. Her task, task is simple, to calm the chaos. In like manner, the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And once there was calming, there could be creating. You recall how the verse continues. The, the ver earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Again, that's Genesis chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Before God created the world, the Spirit of God calmed the world. Could I invite you to invite Him to, call your, to calm yours? Just invite Him to calm yours. Welcome the Spirit of God. Welcome the comfort of God. Again, the initial appearance of the Holy Spirit was to bring calm out of chaos. I apologize, that was my computer. Would you let him bring calmness into your world? Turn your heart toward him today. My friend, I don't think your good Lord wants you to live in a state of anxiety and fear. And the Spirit of God entered the world to bring calm to the world. And He will enter your world to bring the same. Please ask Him. Ask Him to calm the chaos and trust Him to do exactly that. Have a good day, my friend.